And the many extravaganza rolls on and 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 on. It's a many extravaganza. And now, welcome to what's the name of this one? Painting Warrior Falls. We're going to be painting up some rocks. We're going to be painting up some stuff uh, from the upcoming Warrior Falls um, Rivals Pack. Uh, super excited about this one. I actually don't have my Black Panther and Killmonger put together yet, uh, but I put together Warrior Falls. I'm super excited to paint it, and I might have done some interesting stuff with it. Hopefully you find it interesting. We can talk about those interesting things and, um, and discuss it and see what you think. So let's get over to it. Let's go to the mini cam. Boop. That's the noise it makes when you go to the mini cam. Um, so the very first thing I did is made some wonderful rocky outcrop terrain bits to scatter um, on my table. Um, these are made with uh, pink insulation foam. Um, my partner was able to cut up and then I did some putty and then made plastic card bases and then we got some texture on it and gonna paint these up but really what we're here for is where your falls so when will I paint Odin that statue's too big to paint and I don't have one I can't even get one so this is my warrior falls can you see it Tony yeah, great. so this is my warrior falls um, I went ahead and wanted to make it a true centerpiece um, to my gaming table um, for the train, the upcoming uh, Wakanda train, uh, and really make something uh, awesome and um, truly the center of my, my gaming table for my Wakanda train. Um, so what I did was cut a piece of plastic card or actually it's a MDF board and the bases are falling all over the place. Um, and then this is all pink foam, pink um, uh, insulation foam cut, right? To make a rough shape. And then I used wood filler and some putty to smooth it out and stuff. I wanted a smooth rock as it moved, and then as it moves to more the hand carved, um, hand carved section. Uh, wanted to, these little teeth are seen on the Warrior Falls terrain piece. I wanted to replicate those down here. These are also pink foam. And then of course made a water, um, pool of water. Uh, the back does not have, it does not have a full back by default. No, it does not. So if you want to, it's, it's quite easy. Um, this was a very easy uh, uh, project to work on. It was, it was literally just cut chunks of pink foam, uh, smash it together with some wood filler and get it all smashed together. And it, it turned out super great, super fun. Um, but it, this was the real fun part. I love the, the pool. Um, really wanted like this asymmetrical sort of Pull down here. This will be filled with realistic water effects later, um, but we got to paint it first, right? We got to paint it first. So we're just going to do some big dry brushing, and we're going to. And like I said, once you get the table and you get all your Wakanda train, you scatter these out, and then you have this like bit of train that ties all the train together, right? You have this big piece with these shapes of rocks, and then you have these smaller pieces, and then uh, these get scattered, and that helps tie the entire table together. So these are, to me, those are quite essential and a fun aspect to the overall effect. Let's just start. This was base coated with a uh, dark, um, like an umber color. I think we want to add some warmth to this. I got a couple of dark colors, dark browns out and khakis and stuff. Yeah, this one does not have a back. There's a, there's, there's a lot of goes into um, doing a back or not.
Would you had a video article to show stages? Uh, a video would have been almost impossible, um, honestly. Uh, the amount of time, and I did it at home, kind of situation. Uh, but I do have some photos, but they're not very step by step. But maybe I'll talk to Ann and see if we can maybe post a couple of those sometime. Bearded Dragon in the chat brings up a really good point that uh, um, using an aerosol spray primer on bare pink foam will eat it away. So how did you get your primer on without uh, eating the foam? Uh, so I used airbrush primer because yes, if you use an aerosol primer on pink foam, it will absolutely eat the foam. And I don't mean eat lightly, it will eat the foam. Is this too big for a table? I don't think so. What makes it too big for a table? Probably more than Weapon X, but this is all, this isn't, this is not, this is, this is more than double the actual product you, you purchase. I, I modded this. So, um, the, the Wakanda, the Warrior Falls is, sm uh, pretty sure s much smaller than the Weapon X bunker. I think it's only three frames of plastic for Warrior Falls. That might not even be correct. But a lot of this is just pink foam that I've added to the Warrior Falls because I want a big centerpiece. And when I say centerpiece, I'm not putting it in the dead center of the table. I like putting stuff like this to the side to set the scene. I'm definitely a big scene setter when it comes to my adventures games. I like to set the atmosphere and tone for the game that I'm about to play with my opponent. I want to tell a cool story. And so I want cool, you know, I want damn cool terrain on my table, Tony. You know, if I want to play a game with, if I want to play a game without terrain, I'd play one of my favorite board games. But I ain't playing no board game. I'm playing a mentor's hobby game and I need a dope piece of terrain on my table. So when the neighbor pops over to borrow a cup of sugar, they're like, what the Sam hell? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, look at that. And they're like, what is this game you're playing? I'm like, this is Marvel Christ Protocol. Welcome to Wakanda. And they're like, great googly mooglies. And I'm like, I know, right? It's pretty dope. Cause I like fancy tables. It's what maybe it's what really like that moment when it, uh, you know, 1992 Dallas, right? That moment when you see a table like fully flushed out and ridiculous, um, and you're like, this is this is what I do with myself now, right? <laughs> like, this is now just what I do. I need to make this, I need to play this game, these types of games, because I need cool damn tables that impress my friends and confuse my family. Sure, yeah, absolutely. You could use this as Geonosian terrain and for Legion, love it. We're gonna get a very Geonosian look on here with this sort of warm rock. It's gonna start warm, but we're gonna see where it goes. What color was this even? I'm gonna use this big old brush. I even got a bigger brush, but like, look at this big old honking makeup brush. Makeup brushes are great for painting terrain. Get you there fast. I wouldn't call this dry brushing. Call, um, this is more of what may many people would consider like an overbrush. 
we're really just smashing paint on as quick and as heavy as possible. Leaving a little bit of that dark brown showing through the crevices. Come on, make this big old piece train and y'all got no questions for me? Breaking my heart. When I did the pink foam, I used a lot of wood filler and smoothed out. And then I used a, uh, a two-part epoxy sculpt putty and um, used that to like refine the rocks and blend them together even more. Cause like, like these were two completely separate pieces of pink foam and I used a lot of putty to like bring that, that pink foam together to create a more cohesive uh, structure. Just felt a little more uh, miniature centric then. Thanks for all the time and info share you guys are doing. Oh, thanks. I think everyone in the studio appreciates that. We all put our heart and soul into this job. Um, it's, it's pretty astounding actually. Um, I'm gonna gush for a moment, Tony. You catch me at a, I, I, look, I've had a, I've had a, I've had some pumpkin spice. I had lunch. I'm feeling all, I'm, I'm feeling all emotional now. I'm gonna gush about my coworkers. Um, I, I think they're all upstairs watching and now they're all gonna be like, oh, see, he, he, he does have a heart. And then I'm gonna go upstairs and like change that perspective. Um, we're all very passionate and we love what we do here. And we really pour our, our hearts and souls into doing the best we can and better every time. Um, everyone from dev and graphic design to art and sculpting and marketing and even the production team that we work closely with. Like it is a passionate group of people and we love sharing our, the information and the joy and the passion of Mentor's hobby. So, we thank you for joining us for our mini extravaganza because, you know, without you, without you, what are we? Just a man smashing a red rust color on some styrofoam. That's really a weird thing when you think about it, isn't it? That was what you get paid to do today. Well, I smashed red rust color paint on a piece of house insulation foam. Oh, were you doing something like important like building a house? Nah, it was, it was a dope waterfall. Ah, cool. This is why my family doesn't understand what I do. They're like, what do you mean? That's okay. You all get me. I want more red, more red, more red, more red on the tops. Thicker paint, thicker paint. Um, you can also use a thin down white glue to protect the pink foam before you get ready to paint. That's a good trick. I did not do that. Um, it does help seal it and stuff. I didn't do that. I just kind of went for it. But I'm a monster like that. This is actually really my first real true build like this as well. I've never really done much like this. So I'm pretty excited to get this painted up. Get the entire set painted up. Get all that Wakanda train painted up. Um, it was funny the first time my wife and I both shot for makeup brushes. Oh yeah, makeup brushes are great. Uh, what I use for the base, I used MDF board. Uh, just busted out the old um, jigsaw and I drew a shape. I, I got the pink foam and everything like lined up roughly. Drew a shape on it with a uh, marker and then uh, jigsawed it out. You know, please get your parents permission before you use a jigsaw. You need, you need adult, adult supervision before you use your jigsaw.
And then this is just like, uh, the, the gravel is just a, um, just a pumice gel material, easily purchased from any, your fine local hobby shops. I'm gonna use a whole bottle of this paint, I swear. You watch. Are you gonna do a resin pour for the water at the bottom? I am, I am, not today. Not today. So you have to watch uh, for the updates when that's done. But not today. I doubt I would get to it in the first place. Um, so I didn't want to. I didn't want to promise that and bring it in. And also, if I mess up, like let's say I did not get this sealed. I used putty and I sealed the pool, but let's imagine I, I don't do a good job at this. And I'm standing here and I go to pour liquid water, liquid resin into this and I did a bad job sealing it. And Schick is outside waiting for his paint stream and there is liquid resin all over the paint studio. I don't think that's a good time for everybody. So I did not want to risk it. I will do that at home in a controlled environment. <laughs> so in case I messed up, um, I have to deal with the mess, not Tony, as I might drop and leave. I'll be like, well, I messed that up, Tony, sorry. Is it, there's a thick piece of MDF with the edge just shaved down. Yeah, it's a, it's a thick piece of MDF. And then you sandpaper to smooth the edges and bevel it. You always want to bevel it. This is plastic card and even the plastic card I bevel. Like, and that's like, we're talking like, I think that's a 1.5 millimeter plastic card. It's a very, very thin plastic card. And I bevel that. I want to create a transition between uh, the quote, quote miniature and the tabletop. Um, I like it when the train kind of blends in a little bit. So, because the train is a set piece to the wonderful miniatures that we designed. Uh, what gets done paint first? A set for a studio or set for home? Uh, typically, a studio piece gets painted way, way before. There's lots of reasons for that. Boom, 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 go and go and go. Super, super fast, as fast as I can. Who supervised Dallas? Oh, when I was cutting? My partner. She's better at it. I want to see highlights. So do I. I'm going as fast as I can. With something that size, what would you use to stop the resin from getting contaminated while it's cured? Uh, contaminated? Do, like, do you mean from dust and particulate in the air over time? Um, maybe? Yeah, maybe that. Like a piece of, I don't know, maybe a piece of plastic over the top. I haven't really thought about it. Also, if it gets a little contaminated, I probably won't care because I'm probably going to go in with more water effects. I'm not going to have it as a placid pool. Like, why would I have a placid pool? Um, there's water splooshing down into it. Um, so I'm probably going to do a lot of splashing ripple effects. So even if like some stuff gets into the top of the resin, it, it won't matter because it'll get covered. Um, it'll, it'll just get covered. So I, I'm not super worried about the contamination. Um, if you were going for a placid pool, I would just get a piece of plastic and just throw it over the top. And, you know, stuff like that. Uh, I didn't even think about plastic card for Sky Train. Yeah, plastic card is great. Is that Train 5 Plus? Can I throw with the Hulks? JK. Why are you JK? You ain't got JK. Ask your question. Um, I'm I'm going to consider this 
because I've added to it, I've added so much to it, I'm gonna consider this um, uninteractive terrain because a big piece of terrain like this, I actually don't want to be removed from the board. Um, I spent way too much time on it, thank you very much, that I don't need you showing up in my house playing the hulks and throwing it off the table in turn one. So because I've added all my stuff, I'm, I'm calling it un uninteractive. I'm not throwing my hard work off the board. Plus if you like big stuff like the, like say the Quinjet, right? Uninteractive means that big space that it consumes stays a relevant uh, area, right? If you just remove that, it's, it's, it's much more impact than removing a, you know, a dumpster, right? Because then there's still more, there's still plenty on the board. Uh, I don't play what kind of a this box is. Has me seriously considered buying in. The miniatures and the train both look great. Oh, thanks, Ninja Mike. Yeah, I think this is a good spot to like, you know, if, if you've been kind of, you know, if you're looking for a new... I mean, definitely if you're looking for a new um, affiliation to play and maybe what kind has been on your short list and you just haven't taken the leap yet. Um, this, this Rivals pack gives such a great jumping on point for the affiliation in general because you get two leaderships, um, which is fantastic. You get two fantastic versions of our favorite Black Panther and our favorite to hate Killmonger. Um, what a fantastic villain. Um, and the tactic cards tell such a phenomenal story. Josh was talking about it yesterday in the uh, MCP roadmap stuff about how we spent a lot of time actually talking about uh, the future of rival packs and how we want to philosophically think about these and the goal is really to tell a story, right? Like that's, that's been from the very beginning, right? That it, we're telling a story. We're telling like a little story and we're celebrating miniatures. We're celebrating uh, the art of miniatures. We're celebrating, um, you know, an ability for us to create new and interesting sculpts on these fantastic characters because I gotta be real honest, I can never get enough Spider-Mans. Um, just too many cool things to do and tell as a character. Um, so, you know, you want to, it's, it's a celebration of all these things. And the story was always the focus, right? Like um, the first Rivals pack, Spidey versus Doc. Originally that wasn't on a city, uh, you know, piece of terrain. That was originally concepted a uh, totally different set, totally different scene. And as we started talking about it, like this, the story started being told to us, right? We, we were telling each other this story and it kind of changed to this, um, you know, okay, really the scene, what we really want is this high skyscraper uh, up in the sky story moment, right? Uh, because that's where Spider-Man like really shines like Spider-Man's up in the air, right? And and Doc Ock really going after him at You know this height that they, they're both reaching um, It just became a, a more compelling thing to explore and that's where that You know city thing came from so when we started talking about this rivals panel you know, Killmonger versus Black Panther. Well, immediately Warrior Falls was like, like just immediately, right? We're just like, well, Warrior Falls, right? It's, that one is, it, it was, it felt a little more obvious, like that's where you want this fight. And that story, it was really fun to be able to tell that story in the Marvel Crisis Protocol setting, right? So what does Warrior Falls look like for us, right? What is our interpretation of Warrior Falls? Where does the story go? And Josh and I started coming up with this 
idea, Josh was, Josh was just like, oh, it's got to be this. And we started coming up with this idea of like, you know, the cards tell the path of two stories, you know, Killmonger preparing for the fight, Black Panther preparing for the fight, the fight, and then the two different outcomes that could occur, right? either Panther, T'Challa winning, or, you know, Eric Killmonger winning. And, and I thought it just became like this really compelling thing that we were able to explore and get on the table for collectors, right? So it was very exciting. Is this your worthy gallery? This is not, this is not. This is, this is for my table at home. This is, um, somebody's at home waiting for this to hit the table so they can play on it. So, I'm going as fast as I can then. But this is definitely not my worthy. I'm, I'm not do. I don't think I'm doing a gallery entry. That's what we're calling them, gallery entries. How many concept iterations of the falls before this one is chosen? Uh, I don't know who's all in the chat. Uh, I think maybe Josh might be watching. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I drew one version of this. Like, it, it was pretty immediate. We looked at, we looked at a bunch of references, and. I, I'm, I'm trying to remember exactly everything. I'm pretty sure I just, I just drew a giant panther head. And then as I, as I want to do, I go to Marco, I'm like, how do we make it stand? Uh, Cause it had the waterfall. Um, and then Marco's like, well, let's put a, and it's got a little chunk of rock in the back. Um, so stuff like that. But I, I feel like I feel like this was one of those. If I remember correct, this was done so long ago. Holy cow! Um, this was done so long ago. It's hard to remember sometimes. Um, but I feel like this was sort of one of those. You just got it in the first one kind of situation, right? This. You just kind of knew what 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 the story needed. Oh, uh, what do we got here? Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Whoa, what's all the Spider-Mans? Did I miss something? Did I miss any spoilers? I think Tony should do a gallery entry. Epic Duck, sup, sup, what up, boy? We're, uh, we're painting up our Warrior Falls conversion. We've converted up a Warrior Falls. Added a bunch of pink foam, fun stuff like that. Getting it ready for a fun tabletop centerpiece situation. With one shot cards, will this have one in it? I don't think this has a one shot. I don't remember that being the case. Uh, what's with the cardboard, dry brushing or, yeah, this is just for dry brushing. When you're, I'm just smashing the ex excess paint off. MBD, MBD. Um, I need to raid and run. Time to pick up the kids. Putting finishing touches of Sinister Doc. Woo! Nice. I loved painting up that, that Doc Ock with the science beaker. He's just doing science! He's a science person. Gonna have to, I'm gonna have to rebust out Team Science. The new iteration of Team Science. I should have brought some blue tack, Tony. I can run and get you some. No, you I'm almost done now. Interesting, I always use paper towel with advantage cardboard. Who said there's advantage? I don't think there's a disadvantage to either. I just grab cardboard because I can throw it away. 
because um, it was in the trash and I dug it out of the trash. That was the only advantage it had. Um, it also doesn't get the little fuzzies, but I don't think there's anything wrong with paper towels. But I definitely dug this out of the recycling instead of using fresh paper towel. Hello, you cannot talk about upcoming releases. Well, if you know I can't, then why'd you ask? That's just rude. You're putting the onus on me. You're making me feel like the jerk. That's not fair. That's not fair. I understand these philosophical tricks. Let's add a little yeller to this. I'm gonna use yellow ochre. And we're gonna keep a little bit of this brown red in here too. I don't wanna just go straight to yellow ochre. I'm gonna build up. Delicious science, delicious magenta science. So I love a real painterly effect sometimes. Uh, so we're just gonna go crazy here. You hear that nice flip flap of a dry brush and you know work is getting done. I know we're on rock, but how will we tackle water? So everything in miniature is exaggerated and, and you know, Making something realistic or true is is difficult, right? Um, this is why I don't like likenesses in miniatures. Um, miniatures just has its own set of rules, and light works different on miniatures than it does in real life. And that's why I always paint my rocks. Like you know, I I've, I've seen people like not paint rocks and they put natural rocks, and they're like, look how real it looks. I'm like, well, it but your miniature doesn't look real. So why do you want your rock to look real? Um, you want it to look hyper real. And so when you're painting water, there is sort of a, it looks so good when it's sort of like that hyper blue, right? Like that stylized version of water, right? That almost, I'm not gonna say cartoony cause it's not cartoony, but that hyper stylized cartoonish version of water it's real blue it's azure right and i am going to knock that little painter statue right off i can see it already i'm on my hard dry brushing um i think for this project though i'm going to do something a little different i'm going to go lean a little more because i'm using realistic water and I have struggled in the past getting realistic water to look cartoony. Um, I'm going to go a different approach and I'm gonna paint the water a little more gray blue. So a little more of the realistic. That is my goal, that is my plan. And I can't do the water until I do the rock. Because if I do the water and then I dry brush the rock, then I'm going to mess up the rock or the water. So we're kind of stuck in this loop here where I got to do this part first. I'm just going to build up this nice Yeah, I'm probably gonna tint mine anyways. I'm probably gonna tint my water a little bit in, in, for myself. And then I'm gonna paint this water, the plastic water, uh, to sort of tie it together. So really I think my plan is to paint or get the realistic water effect in there and then paint the plastic water to match what I can do with the realistic water. Um, because 
the realistic water I'm going to have, I will have less control over. There are people out there that would have more control over if they were doing it. That is not me. I have not done it enough. So I'm going to try to do what I can, but whatever happens sort of happens. Um, and then that will determine the color of my plastic water. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. Heavy, heavy dry brushing. It's just rocks. It's just rocks. We're doing nothing fancy here. Probably use a couple washes later on too. To tie it all together, get some nice contrast, like push some, push some color back down into the crevices where it gets blown out. No big deal, no big deal. Circles are always the best for dry brushing. A lot of times I have to remind myself of that too. I still feel like I'm more over brushing than dry brushing. How's it looking? How's it looking? I don't feel like I got enough of that deep red down in those crevices on the side of the face. Just keep pushing color. Slowly build it up. Slowly build it up. Look at those tapes. My how big are those bases? Which bases? I don't know which bases you're talking about. The base I the base that I put the terrain on, it's huge. Cause it's custom. The ones attached to the falls. Oh, those are 35s. These are 35s. Just 35s. Nice size base for a single like character, right? Do you get somebody gigantic? Like that Mr. Sinister. Definitely need some washing. Bring in a little more color. Probably wash a blue into this. It'd be nice. Gonna keep building it up. Keep building it up. Slow and steady wins the race on this. What 
what other terrain pieces could we do with this sort of idea? I think with a little plastic card you could do something with the Spider-Man Doc Ock Rivals panel as well. Seeing this waterfall and the other Wakanda train forced me to order a forest map. The Wakanda train is very cool. I'm very excited to get that painted up. Get a game on it. Just making a, it's just, it's sort of what kind of, you know, we were talking about um, getting ready for main extravaganza and uh, you know we talked about like oh we should maybe do something with warrior falls is there something there hobby wise and I, I think it was Shik said why don't you just do like a whole create a whole theme for it and I was like oh you're, you're just trying to make me work and then I was like, but I want to do it. And um, as I started building it, it was just like, oh, this is just going to look so cool once we get all the terrain painted, and get this on the table. And then I get um, Black Panther and Killmonger painted and have a really dope, um, well, I, I'm probably want to play Claw because I'm a big Claw. I love Claw so much. I, I had such a blast playing Claw on stream against Josh. Um, really just absolutely enjoyed playing him. So I'm, I'm, I'm eager. I haven't got to play him since, actually. So I'm eager to get Claw back on the table. So I think the very first game on this table will be Claw versus Wakanda. Um, you know, steal that vibranium, uh, the little vibranium hauler truck we designed. The, the, the very first napkin sketch of that thing is real rough. Um, it's, it's just like a rough, rough shape. And, um, you know, the, the sculpting team just fantastic give it we were like give it to evan 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 does such a wonderful job with hardline um hardline sculpts and is just a really passionate and talented person when it comes to like the uh the the things like robots and uh vehicles um we have Bexley, who is also like that, who just really just vehicles and terrain and stuff. Uh, but we gave that vibranium hauler to Evan, and he took just the worst napkin sketch I probably could have ever given anybody and just turned it into like this wonderfully fantastic little vibranium hauler vehicle and I'm so excited to get that thing painted up and play some games with it just have that in the middle of the table and like that's what Claw's going for man Yeah, there's, I, I usually just order my plastic card online. This is the boring part in the back. Let's get a bigger brush. Let's see if we can use this bigger brush. Let's 
Let's just go ham. Fade away the shakeup. Just really need to get in there and get some color down. It doesn't gotta be perfect. What do you got, Tony? I was just about to ask you, you talked about, you know, adding some, some blue in there to start shifting the color. I was wondering, like, you know, adding some greens and things, but how many, how many other colors do you think you could get in there um, and give it like a nice rich color effect before it stopped, you know, being the color? Being what you, what you were trying to go for. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think, I think definitely greens and blues are probably essential to what we want to do here. Um, like I want a little blue on the back side, but I think a little green helps sell the naturalistic part of, of the train. It does tie it back into nature, especially if you put green toward the bottom of things of your terrain, and that could be any terrain, um, putting a little green toward the bottom. Um, it's sort of like it's reflecting a little bit of grass or um, foliage around it. Can, can really help sell the effect. Um, also, if you just look at the way buildings sort of stain, you can see a lot of green toward the bottom. So I like throwing a little green toward the bottom, but a little blue in the shadows is always nice too. Now we're getting that yellow. I think with the Wakanda vibranium hauler, it's the purple glow that makes it Wakandan. And then black steel. And this eventually, there's vines all over this, and there are already plans to cover it in like little grass tufts. So we're gonna definitely get the green in there from that standpoint too. Like once this is all done, um, we're gonna bust out the grass tufts. We're gonna cover it in uh, little plant life. There's these little vines. I wanna extend that all over. Um, the little cave on the back is gonna be covered in vines, so it's like a little hidden cave. You know, like a little vine curtain, basically. So there's gonna to be tons of green on this, and that's gonna bring a lot to it. Is this your king? So the studio version of this was painted by Aaron Lovejoy. Should have asked him how he did it. I really liked his paint job. A 
Those stabby stab effects. Pop, 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 pop. Uh, is the bottom of Falls part of the kit or I hobbied up? I hobbied it up. I can't leave well enough alone. Come on. Come on. Have you met me? I'm here to hobby. I'm here to hobby with you all. We're on a journey, kids. Don't make me turn this hobby bus around. Might be a little too bright. Need a little bit more of that red back in there. I could watch this all day. It's very, uh, it's very uh, ASMR almost, right? The little flickety flack of the, of the brushes. We got our lo-fi jams in the background. I'm, I'm talking nice and quiet. We're just making some hobby stuff together. Getting ready for your next hobby experience and steps. Just, just working out ideas together, right? Slowly building up that color. It ain't a race. It ain't a race. As excited I am, I gotta do it right and I gotta do it slow. There's gonna be so much, Tony. There's gonna be. So, I can't wait for y'all to see this. There's gonna. I. I can already know. There's going to be so much grass on this. Like, there's going to be so much grass on this. Little plants and flowers everywhere. Um, the Warrior Falls comes with some little um, heart-shaped herb plants. So those add a nice added feature. Um, so you can do like a little purple glow on the bottom of those to add like to the overall scene as well. So I do plan on having a couple of the heart-shaped herbs painted up with a little purple glow on the bottom. Um, scattered around the pool. I want them like growing around the pool. I thought that would be a nice touch. Um, My master taught me the art of the paint smash. And now I pass it to you. Just slowly building up that color. Little pop of purple, yeah, that little pop of purple. Little pop of purple, gonna be good. <sighs> Slay so much gravy past few days, so I have to hobby all weekend. Yeah, let's hobby all weekend. I mean, I'm gonna be here tomorrow. Jake's gonna be here tomorrow. He's got hobby stuff, I got hobby stuff. Tony's gonna be in the chat, Ann's gonna be in the chat, Summer's gonna be in the chat, probably. Like, we're gonna hobby today and tomorrow still. I'm probably going to hobby on Sunday at home on my day off.
actually gonna get a little bit back there. I don't want a lot back there. It's, I wanna keep that back cave. I got a little cave back there. Looks very nice, very dark. It's gonna look so good. All right, I wanna start highlighting, but I need to get just a little bit more going on here. worry about the cave today. We got plenty to worry about. Let's focus on some other stuff. Any idea how long the hobby hang is tonight? I think it's an hour. Uh, does it not say on the schedule? I think it's an hour. Tony's got a schedule. He's going to tell me. I think it's an hour and a half. Oh gosh, it's an hour and a half. Time, oh, you need to make some spec op boards? Oh man. Share that. I want to see it. What all did you add to the official train to make this? I added just the back and the pull. And it's just made out of pink foam. So pink construction foam, house insulation foam, whatever you want to call it. Um, just cut out some random shapes. Smashed it all together, kind of got a rough idea, um, and then went in with some wood filler, highly essential, filled the gaps. Then I came in with a little putty, smoothed the transitions, made it a little nicer. Let's talk to Ann. Maybe we can get maybe we can get a picture up on socials of one of, of the whip. So you can kind of see where it was. Tony, how's that looking? Do you like it or not? Going as fast as I can. I think this is an appropriate uh, moment for Striker's emoji. What? It's not shameless to steal the setup, Matt. That's not shameless. That's that's the point. My uh my video call backdrop has a uh stone carved piece of art in it. So it just sets behind me in video chats and it says that artist 
copy, great artists steal, quote Pablo Picasso, and then Pablo Picasso is scratched out and it says Banksy. So you, you, you take this idea, that's the point of ideas, it's iteration, inspiration, that's what we're here for. Okay, what time is it? How long we got? Uh, we're at 3.30, so we have... 30 minutes? 30 minutes. Chat, what do you think? Are you inspired? Are you excited? You ready to try one yourself? I'm ready to try more. All right, let's see if we can put some blue. I'm gonna do one more. We'll do that. We're gonna work on the head. I hate doing this. I hate doing this, but we're gonna do it for y'all. Never had the patience for train pain. Great job. Well, there's a lot of tricks to make it faster. No one trick. Put on your favorite movie. Plop down. And uh, just knock it out. Also, don't go for the details. It's not about the details in terrain. It's about big, bold statements. The idea of color. The idea of... Shadow. Uh, when making your own rocks, do you use plaster to texture, or what do you recommend? I use, I cut the, all this rock is cut out of pink foam, pink insulation foam. And then I used, um, I used wood filler and just putty, a two part epoxy putty to sort of create. Uh, the transitions a little smoother or, and to add more rock shapes. Uh, so, so like this was actually accident was more cut at an angle and I wanted a little ridge there. So I used putty to create the shape. Uh, but like the, the major seams were covered in wood filler. And then I used the same two part epoxy to seal in the, the ring around the pool. So when I do the, the resin pour. My table can only handle so many epic pieces. Yeah, that's always the that's always the part of it, right? It's like I I have I have several centerpieces that I love using. Um ba -ba -ba. Where do I get one of those dope AMG coffee mugs? Well, apply to a job at AMG, get hired, profit. Easy as pie. Let's do a little green and blue. So I'm using a smaller brush than I would normally use for this. But I really just want to loosely stab in Is my head in the way. No, I'm going to zoom in so we can see. Fine. This is much finer work than I would normally do. I'd use a bigger brush. But I just want a little blue and green maybe to reinforce those shadows just ever so slightly. This is a random thing to point out, but you mentioned all the lo-fi music that we're enjoying, and I forget when I take off my headphones to go adjust the camera that you're in there not enjoying the lo-fi music. I'm not enjoying the lo-fi music, which is really upsetting. 
but you know such is the way Oh, I know it's like having a, a, a house at capacity. I got, I, I live in a pretty small house. So I feel ya. I have the, 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 I'm at the fortunate part of my life though where the kid has left and all there is now is, to, is miniatures. <laughs> That's the goal we all aspire to. Just yeah. House yeah. full of minis. Kid, you got to go to college. I, I have way more miniatures to buy. But dad, life is hard and tough out there and the, well, I've got miniatures to buy. I'm gonna need to convert that room to a sweet miniatures gallery. Yeah. What if the what if the statue had black onyx eyes? Yeah. Like they carved in and then they inset some black onyx eyes. Yes, I love it. It's ridiculous and comic booky. Sorry, son, but I'm going to need you to get. Let's go a little more green. Water that down just a touch. We can put a little brown in there, too. Why not? Green and brown. So just dab that on and use a second brush to create transition. Doesn't need to be perfect. It's rock. What you're doing right now is like one of my favorite times of painting terrain and bigs just kind of sitting there going at it, right? Mind gets to wander. You half pay attention to a show or listening to some music or something. It's great. Yeah, I agree. Like this is this is the joy of painting measure of well, terrain, right? Like like you're saying, is you know, if I gotta paint if I got to paint a face, I need to get in there and I got, I, I need to focus on that, right? Um, but for terrain, I prefer terrain to be a little loosey-goosey, as they say, and a little more artistic and watercolory, and it doesn't have to be precise, right? We talk a lot about, you know, broad colors when painting terrain for a studio. Um, you don't need, you want to focus on local colors, like the color of the wall. You don't have to shadow highlight the wall. You put a little smudgy grungy on the bottom of the, of the wall. You put a little hit light on the top of the wall and you kind of call it a day. You can put a little texture to create the contrast, but you don't need to go big contrast. And so that kind of frees your mind up, like Tony's saying, to just sort of relax and enjoy like an, a, a process. And um, you don't have to take it so serious, right? You can just paint a little rock, man. It's fine. Paint a little rock. It'll be all right. And you can have fun with colors. That, that's another fun uh, terrain. The world around you, right, is a vast and beautiful thing. So many different colors. And reflecting all those things in your terrain makes them feel more alive and vibrant. So learning how to get just a bunch of wonderful colors on your tabletop. 
just makes it feel more real and like the world we live in. See that little green helps. You see it in there, Tony? Yeah, yeah. That little blue. The crazy part, I'm gonna do this all over this miniature. Just have a good time, put on a, put on sweet tunes or a, a movie. Just watercolor it up. Just get a nice little terrain piece. Gonna slap, slap some um, plant foliage all over it. This is the part where you could also like do all this and then do like a little airbrush to like bring it all together. Little rocks and water, little lily pads. All this water still has to be painted. Yeah, and it's a little easier to see now, but I do want to point out, you know, you have those other small uh, waterfalls there on each side. There's some crawling vines and foliage, little yeah. panther statues. Like there's a lot going on there that's gonna, gonna change the look and add a lot of color interest in this piece when it's done. Yeah, right now you're at that broad, just the rocks and the rocks have like, just the big brushing of everything has like made everything that color. But like there's a, see, can you see this little waterfall right there? So that's on the sculpt and I had to put like a little piece of putty to make like the little cave. Same here. I had to put like a little piece of putty for the cave and then this waterfall breaks into two and it comes down to the pool and it breaks off. So like there's so much stuff that's going to be more color um, all over this piece, right? And that's, that's really the fun of this is like you're going to have all these wonderful colors scattered all over this piece. But first, we gotta we gotta get the bulk of it out of the way, right? We gotta we gotta get all the other parts done. So it's gonna take a minute, but you know, hey, that's part of it. Especially down here by the pool. Let's take down here by the pool. Let's take a little blue. Like, realistically, what we're going to want to do is put like a little... No, this, 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 this is just an idea for later. Like a little blue reflection that the water is like reflecting back up on the rock. And the blue flower or the purple flowers are going to add so much more to it too. But see that that little blue up here really helps with some of the tonal aspects of the rock, right? And maybe maybe blue in the head was probably the wrong idea. Maybe the blue shadows down by the definitely going to put a lot of blue shadows down in the in the pool. I want that to feel reflective. 
up in there because if you look at the way light reflects like this whole underside right can be that reflective blue there as the light from the water bounces back up and shines and ripples across the undersurface of that rock. So it's the bounce light from the water hitting the shadow of the rock uh, can create, it's gonna create a very compelling and interesting um, look. But I still gotta paint all the rock. I haven't even finished that yet. How much time we got? 10 minutes, five minutes basically. Seven minutes. Tell me what I should do, chat. We're out of time. Are you able to start laying in just like a base coat or the start of your blue for the water just so we can start seeing how it's going to come together? Uh, I want to do the realistic water before I put in the ah. roof because... I'm probably going to mess up the realistic water. Paint pass deadline, who's going to stop you? Well, Anne's going to stop me because there's a schedule. And I respect the schedule because there's other people on other um, chats that are just in... What's the next chat? What's the next stream, Tony? Let me consult my schedule here. The next stream, let me make sure I'm looking at the right day. Next stream, Marvel Crisis Protocol, Evolving Crisis Response. Oh, you're not going to want to miss that. You don't want me to stop this one. <laughs> Go rogue. I have a schedule. A uh, little inside AMG. Dallas is rogue every day except for mini strat. That's, that's actually very true, isn't it? I, I go rogue every day except for a mini strap. I'm like, ah, oh, no, there's a schedule. I got got to help maintain. Dallas, what did you do today? That's none of your business. <laughs> Don't mind what I did. Oh, uh, see, man, just adding another, just another, um, just another uh, highlight over top of that blue on the head. See how that, whoa, man, that's going to really come together. It's really going to, really going to bring it all, all together. I'm, this is a very exciting project. This is going to be a very long project, but I knew that, and... Um, you know, it's going to be worthwhile. And I think that that's another thing to think about when you're painting miniatures is it's, it's the journey, right? It's not the destination. Um, it's the journey of the painting and the learning of the thing and creating something. And then later on you get to share it. And man, oh man, I love when I get to share something with a friend and they get they feel that challenge in their heart, right? Like we were talking about this a little earlier on the uh, the Shatterpoint chat, right? It's like, you know, Schick designed something and then Plumber feels compelled to be like, well, I gotta do, I gotta do it better than that or at least it's good because I can't be, I can't be behind. And we do that in the sculpting department, like, you know, well, you know, I was saying, like, Evan sculpted that thing, and everybody's like, I got to do, I got to step my game up, you know? And painting, like, I love it when when Brendan sends me something, I'm like, man, I got to step my stuff up. Or I send something to Brendan, he's just like, oh, that's, a, that's really good. Like, you're making me look bad. And, like, it's always, that's always, like, a fun way to work with your, with creatives is that pushing each other to to strive and that desire to just be better, right? You know? Marco was telling the story about Alex coming in and being like, I want the hardest thing, like the first sculpt, like we're 
Like Marco's going to sign Alex the first sculpt he's going to sculpt, right? And and Alex is like, I want Professor X because it's like going to be real hard. It's like, man, you are you are really determined to like step it up, right? And that's that's awesome to see and be a part of. Um, and just being like, time to step it up. Time to step it up. You know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with how far I got on this. I'm gonna be honest. Even though I didn't finish it, I wasn't expecting to finish it. Team Panther, Team Killmonger, uh, Team Claw. We should wrap it up, Dallas, so Ann's got enough time to get into the next stream. All right, we got the next stream coming up. It's a Marvel Crisis Protocol one. You're not going to want to miss it. Um, so we're going to finish up. I'm just going to keep dry brushing, Tony. I'm going to talk, and you tell me when we're done. Uh, so get ready for the next one. Thanks for joining us. Mini Extravaganza continues day two. Don't forget there's a day three. Go check out the schedule. We'll see you later. Bye. Wave to the camera. Say bye. I'm dry.